Glory, glory, glory. This is the prophet Lovi Elias and uh, I thank the Lord Jesus for each and every one of you that are on right now and wherever you're watching from in the world, I want you to know that the Lord Jesus loves you so very much and I'm really, really excited about what we are going to talk about today and, uh, and I'm going to be talking about the curse of poverty, dismantling the curse of poverty. Uh, this is a very misunderstood subject in the body of Christ and I think it will be really a blessing for somebody to really understand what poverty is. The reason so many people are not getting free from it is because of how so many people don't know what they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. The Bible says do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. So if you do not understand what you're fighting, you have already lost the battle. Wow. I'll say it again. If you do not understand what you're fighting, you have already lost the battle. Some people are saying the volume is too low, so you might have to turn me up. I want you to understand that, and I will say it one more time. If you do not know what you're fighting, you have already lost the battle. Maybe I'll say it again. If you do not understand what you're fighting, you have already lost the battle. I want you to share this. Let somebody know that the prophet is on. And I believe that this is going to bless you. And this is going to push you where God wants you to be. So those who are on Facebook, whether you're on, on YouTube, whether you're on Periscope, I want you to share it and share it and share it as many times as you can. And I believe that the Lord Jesus is really going to bless you, is going to increase you, and is going to cause his face to shine upon you. And I believe that this is going to be something that will truly bring you to the place that God wants you to be in. Amen. Amen. I want you to share it and share it and share it. And again, I want to tell you, the issue is you is you don't know what you're fighting. The issue is not big. The Bible says it clearly. Is there anything too difficult for God? Some of you give and you wonder, well, I've been giving. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. It, but nothing is changing. It's because you're still not understanding what you're fighting. That's good. We have so many tools in the realm of the spirit that God has given us through himself. But if you don't understand what you're contending with, you have already lost the battle. Amen. Number one, I'm going to give you points and I'll go through it quickly and, and hopefully um, tomorrow uh, after, after the Bakersfield conference, I'm going to come back and, and I will expound on it even more. But the first thing that I want you to know is this. Poverty is not a spirit. Amen. There is no spirit of poverty. There is no demon of poverty. I will say it again. Poverty is a curse. It's not a spirit. So you cannot bind poverty. You cannot rebuke poverty. You cannot cover yourself against poverty. By the moment you do that, you have already failed because poverty is not a spirit, it's a curse. Uh, my brother, the evangelist team, God bless you. I don't know if people are following. Yes, we're following, we're following. Yes, Papa, we're here. Poverty is not a spirit. Poverty is a curse. Wow. But it's not a spirit. So if you fast against poverty, you will never change your situation. Wow. wow. If you pray against poverty, you will never change your situation. Haven't you ever asked yourself, how come the people in the world... <laughs> Bill Gates has never been in an overnight prayer. 
He has never fasted. But the guy has no poverty. That's true. That's true. There was a moment in time. Mm -hmm. He was poor. Yeah. There's a story I was watching a, a few years ago uh, that uh, he was, um, he, what is it called? He was at, uh, he was at, um, what's, the, what's this called? Uh, he used to go by this newspaper man. And he used to, this newspaper man used to give him newspapers for free because he could not afford it. And then uh, one day he passed the same newspaper man and he told the news after he had become wealthy. Mm -hmm. He went to the same newspaper man and he asked the newspaper man, do you know who I am? He said, of course, I know who you are. You're Bill Gates. Wow. He asked him, what do you want me to do for you? I'll do for you anything that you want. Wow. And the answer that the newspaper man gave him, it was so brilliant. And I can't fully, I don't want to paraphrase it the long, wrong way and mess it up, but the one who, who is the wealthiest man on earth, I don't even know, that's Bill, is Bill Gates a Christian? He's a believer, right? Bill Gates is a believer, actually. I believe so. He's a believer. Mm -hmm. But be, be, he never went for anointing service. Yeah, that's true. He is never sat down in roko pakata la bayakata poverty die <laughs> because it's not a spirit wow. and it's a shame because somebody in the world can discover that poverty is not a spirit mm -hmm. but people in church have made it a spirit wow. wow let me tell you the truth there are so many demons that Christians have made up that don't even exist mm -hmm. as a prophet I'm telling you There are so many things that believers have made up that doesn't even exist. I'm sorry to say this and people might hate me for saying this. Oh, say it, say it. Do you know how many sermons have been made about the spirit of Jezebel? And there's no demon called Jezebel. Sheesh. Wow. A prophet, am I lying? Jezebel was a witch. Wow. She served a god. What was the god called? Uh, Dagon or, or Mammon? Baal. Baal, there we go. She served Baal. The spirit behind Jezebel was Baal. It was not Jezebel. Jezebel is not a spirit. Mm -hmm. Jezebel was a human being that served a, a false god, a demonic spirit that empowered her. But that demon is not called Jezebel. That's why the church is still binding the spirit of Jezebel. It's not dying. The spirit of Jezebel in the church. No, it's not Jezebel. Jezebel died, is gone. Do you notice nobody in the Bible is fighting the spirit of Jezebel? Wow. That's true. <laughs> how many prophets, how many apostles came? You never saw them fighting against the spirit of Jezebel. But the church has sermons, books, defeating the spirit of Jezebel. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to so prophet, maybe I should go offline. No, I'm no, not no, trying no, to no. poke at people. I'm just trying to it's tell you nice. the truth. You, people have created demons that don't even exist. In fact, you're giving Satan ideas. Wow. wow. You're empowering him because Satan is not creative by nature. So you're giving him ideas. Now he knows he can, come out, he can, he can mess a woman up and everybody will say, she has a spirit of Jezebel. You start fighting against flesh. Mm. And notice the people who are rebuking Jezebel. Jezebel never seemed to come out of people. If anything, it is people that get divided. Mm -hmm. That's true. Ah, there's a Jezebelic spirit here. Who told you? <laughs> they can point out Jezebelic spirit. Mm -hmm. Yet what they are calling Jezebelic spirit is seduction. Seduction is not Jezebel. Mm -hmm. That's a different thing. So we are here inventing demons. <laughs> Literally inventing demons. Then we go to overnight prayer. We don't understand why we are not winning. Wow. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Yes, Papa, we're here. 
because they are man-made, they don't exist. So the, dem- the devil, because remember, what you cannot identify, you cannot fix. So when you're making false dummies, when you're making false images, what is that? When you're making false images, you can answer, just tell him I'm live. You know, and you can show him. That. Is he FaceTiming? Yeah, I'm just live. So when people are making these false images, people are making these false pictures, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the devil is able to hide behind them. So you keep binding, trying to fight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke you, I bind you, but it's not a real spirit. Yeah. So you are shooting in the air, you are fighting in the air, you are not able to defeat anything concrete because it's not even a real thing. Wow. So now the problem arises whereby your contention is against things that don't exist. This is what the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. The truth is this, Christians have made spirituality to be foolishness. Mm-hmm. That even the world can look at some things and say, come on guys, this is common sense. Mm-hmm. But they are Belief in nothingness will make them believe in something that doesn't exist. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's deep. The spirit of Cain. Ah uh-uh. ah. <laughs> Did Cain become a demon? God is telling him, be careful. Sin is knocking at your door. It will make you do this. God is pointing to something else. The Bible says it in the book of James. Why is there killing amongst you? Why is there this among you? Because you guys have envy. Right. You are allowing sin to give you envy. That's why you're killing each other. A demon can seduce you to have envy, but a demon is not envy. Wow. Wow. There's no, I bind the spirit of envy. I bind the spirit of jealousy. Jealousy is not even a spirit. Mm -hmm. Jealousy is a character. God himself declares. God himself declares. Mm-hmm. I am a jealous God. So if God is saying I am jealous, is God possessed? He's saying you have no other God apart from me. I am a jealous God. Mm-hmm. You have to understand what jealous is. Jealous is ob protective over what is yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think people don't even understand what jealousy means. Jealous means this is mine. I don't want anybody else to have it. Nothing wrong with that. Envy is I want what you have because I don't have it. So a lot of times people think envy is jealousy. So when you're saying, I rebuke the spirit of jealousy, Mm. so you're rebuking God because God is saying, I am a jealous God. The devil has never claimed I am jealous. Wow. Wow, The devil has only envied what was not his. Women are always, a a wife will be jealous of her husband. A husband will be jealous of his wife. A girlfriend will be jealous of her boyfriend. A boyfriend will be jealous of... They will not... No, no, you can't look at somebody because this is theirs. They are trying to be protective. Mm -hmm. Envy is demonic. But even envy itself is not a spirit. The devil can incite you to envy what is not yours. Mm -hmm. So there are many doctrines that people have made up of demonic this, spirit of that, spirit of this, spirit of that, spirit of this, spirit of that, spirit. I, I, I just want you to pray against the spirit of fear, you know, because I, I am so afraid of tomorrow. No, that's not fear. <laughs> that's uncertainty. You're not sure of what tomorrow will be because you have never seen it. If the spirit of fear enters you, you'll be in a mental institution. Wow. You see the people who are walking, they have lost their mind. That is the spirit of fear. (laughs) The spirit of fear walks with another spirit called terror. So when people are saying spirit of fear, no, 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 you are just uncertain, which is okay. 
That's why the God says, do not be afraid. Have I not told you, be of good courage? Did you see God rebuking the spirit of fear? Wow. God is telling them, have I not told you, do not be afraid. I am with you. Go and be of good courage. You, you are busy. I bind fear. <laughs> Instead of saying, Father, give me boldness to walk into what you have given me. Yeah. You, you are binding a spirit that doesn't exist. Notice when the disciples were shaken by being beaten for the sake of the gold spill. They said, Father, stretch your hand. Perform even more miracles. They did not bind the spirit of fear what they, they were going to be, what was going to be done to them. They simply said, Father, stretch your hand. This is in the book of Acts. Perform more miracles. Show that Jesus is truly your son. The Bible says the spirit of God filled the room and he filled them with boldness to preach the gospel. Wow. Remember, they were afraid because they were looking for them to kill them. But when boldness came, they are nothing to be afraid of. Mm. God bless you, JR, uh, uh, my daughter, God bless you. And uh, Caroline, my daughter, God bless you. Notice, you are praying, you are binding things because you think the absence of something is the presence of something. Yet it doesn't work like that. I feel like I'm talking to myself though. Yeah, we hear you, we hear you. Because good, Facebook has shared, but they have not shared enough. Ooh. I need people to really share this. This is why so many people are not coming out of poverty. And I'll give you scriptures that will help you, but I just want to show you how, how far some of you, you may be even be watching right now. You may be even be watching right now. You may be thinking right now. That is why so many of you, somebody has prophesied to you. You will make it, you'll be wealthy, but you're still broke. You're wondering, why isn't the prophetic word not coming to pass? Mm -hmm. It's because you don't understand how prosperity works and you don't know what poverty looks like. Right. Wow. Concrete rose, God bless you. Hello. So we are praying amiss because we don't understand. I wish more people would share this. I was thinking I was going to just teach a little bit, but I was going to come into some deep, some of these deeper things tomorrow, but I feel like God just pushed it to be now. Amen. 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 So if people in the world can prosper, if people in the world can prosper, Shaina, don't worry, I'm going to teach you. That's why we are here. Amen. Amen. If people in the world can prosper and you're still waiting for anointing, anointing oil to be poured for you so that you can enter into millions, but mm. you don't know the road to millions, Ooh. I'm sorry. That's you stay good. in church still saying, I receive it. <laughs> I receive it. Mm -hmm. I receive it. But you're not getting anything. God is lifting. I receive it. But nothing is changing it because you don't know. <laughs> and remember, there is nothing wrong with saying I receive it. I believe in it. It's like amen. But if you don't understand how this thing works, We have a generation of people who are, are, are deceived because of the wrong doctrine. Wow. That even the world says, you people go to church and these people are stealing money from you. Why are they saying that they are stealing money from you? I thank God that our church is not like that. But why do people say you're going to church and they are stealing money from you? It's because... You go, you give your tithe, you pray there, but this God is not doing anything from mm. you. So to them, it's a gimmick. Because you being in the house of God means things need to change. So if things are not changing, they are looking at you like you are a fool, they are stealing from you. Wow. Amen. Yet it's not even the house of God. It's the wrong doctrine. Ah, that's good. Notice, King David was not poor. When he was in his father's house, he was poor. 
When he became king, obviously he was not poor. Mm -hmm. But why was Solomon wealthier than him? So there are certain questions that, that a believer needs to ask themselves as a child of God and really reason to understand why there are things that are keeping you behind when you should be farther ahead. Wow. That's deep. Poverty is not a demon. Mm -hmm. Poverty is a curse. If you are taking notes, you need to know this so that you can come out of poverty. Amen. Amen. You do not get rid of poverty by saying, I rebuke you poverty, because it's not a person. Wow. It's a curse. Let me show you some, a verse in the Bible. Go to the book of Genesis. Go quickly to Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45, verse 10 to 11. This is Joseph speaking to his brothers. Chapter 10 to 11. Uh, no, uh, chap Genesis 45, verse 10 to 11. Genesis 45, 10 to 11. Listen to this great prophet. Amen. Genesis 45, 10 to 11. Read. Amen. And thou shalt dwell, dwell in the land of Goshen, mm -hmm. and thou shalt be near unto me. Mm -hmm. Thou and thy children, and thy children's children, mm -hmm. and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. Mm -hmm. And there will I nourish thee, mm -hmm. for yet there are five years of famine, mm -hmm. lest thou and, thou and thy household, and all that thou hast, come to poverty. So Joseph is telling his family, go get Papa, go get everybody. I will establish you in a town called Gosham. There I will nourish you. I will feed you so that you and your houses, don't, you and your families don't end up in poverty. Wow. What delivered Egypt from poverty was wisdom that God gave Joseph. Wow. wow. What breaks poverty is not, I rebuke poverty, is not fasting and prayer. The number one thing that dismantles mm -hmm. poverty from a person is wisdom. Yeah. That's good. The Pharaoh who God gave a dream that he did not understand, when Joseph spoke to him, notice Joseph did not just interpret the dream for him. Joseph told him what he must do. Uh, you know what you should do? You should uh, take grain out of this. People should tithe this way. Whatever they harvest, they should keep for these seven years. So that the seven years of drought, when they come, we would have so much grain. We would have had so much this. That when all these things are happening, we will have grain. Mm -hmm. Notice that was not in the vision. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. None of this was in the vision. Deep. That is why the king said, who else is better to manage these things except this man who has the spirit of the gods? Mm. Wow. So the thing that destroys people, notice Jesus, feeds more than 10,000 people because it only counts 5,000 men. Mm -hmm. right. But there were women and children among them. So even saying 10,000 is small, it's actually more than 10,000. Wow. When Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish and everybody ate it, and everybody ate and they were satisfied, Jesus asked them, how many baskets did you collect? Notice Jesus did not depend on tomorrow will perform another miracle for there to be bread. Wisdom does not only produce, but it manages. Why is Jesus interested in 12, how many baskets did you collect? I wish I was talking to some people that would hear what, what God is saying. We're here, Papa. We hear you, we hear you. I wish somebody would hear what God is saying right now. Yes. 
is deep. Uh, he can come in if he wants. I wish somebody could, uh, could, could capture this. Notice that instruction was not what God was saying. Yeah. It was the wisdom mm -hmm. of Joseph that he was already practicing when he was a slave in Potiphar's house, mm -hmm. when he was in prison, when he was in his father's house. It now, it now blossomed to the point that the guy could govern a nation, yet he had never, ever, ever, ever thought about politics. Wow. Wow. This is why some of you who are watching, you're in countries that has corrupt leaders and you keep electing them. Wow. For me personally, I grew up in Kenya. I'm not Kenyan, but I grew up in Kenya, and Kenya is like my home. If you look at the political scene, it's the same, same people. Mm. He, was, uh, he was the minister of this. This year is president. Next year is vice president. It's the same, same people and you keep electing them, you keep electing them, you keep electing them, you keep electing them, you keep electing them. And then you're wondering, ah, uh ah. -uh, why aren't things changing? And then you wonder, why aren't things changing? I don't know if somebody's understanding what I'm saying here. You are misinformed. That is why you are struggling with finances. Wow. So when you're busy in, I rebuke, I bind, oh, ah, this, this, this. Other people are becoming more. Other people, God is increasing more. But you, you are not understanding the formula of how to come out of this thing. Wow. Notice wisdom is the application of knowledge. Wow. Wisdom is not independent of knowledge. Now we have supernatural knowledge and we have supernatural wisdom. Wow. And then we have natural wisdom and supernatural uh, and natural knowledge. But you cannot prosper in the natural world with simply, with simply supernatural wisdom wow it's impossible supernatural wisdom interpreted the vision of the pharaoh because it was a spiritual thing Come on. Mm -hmm. but when it came to the natural dimension mm -hmm. he needed to be wise enough to know how to manage things remember the bible is already giving you clues about joseph mm -hmm. and how he was managing the house of of of, of potiphar Mm -hmm. Remember, in his father's house, he never managed anything. But in Potiphar's house, he learned how to manage to the point that he, the king, the, 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 the head of the guard, never worried about anything mm -hmm. except what he was going to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some of you think, because God told me I was going to be a doctor, it means you just wake up and they will give you a certificate. Doctor, you stand there and you are giving people prescription. <laughs> or I'm going to be, a, a God said I will be, I will be a great minister. I will, I will minister in the world. And I will, I, will, uh, uh, I, will, I will preach the gospel in a mighty way. And, and people will be healed. But you never pick up the Bible to study the Bible. You're not learning from people who have done ministry. People who God has used mightily. Let's go, Papa. And you think that even though God told you he will use you, he's going to use you. Yet the Bible is saying, study and show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. So if they come and ask you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, let me tell you a funny thing. I, I saw this video that was really funny. It was actually uh, on, I don't know where I saw it. I don't know if it was, a, it, was an, uh, it was a video. This woman called uh, uh, um, some place and, and she asked, uh, uh, how many? Uh, how much it was? It cost to get in there. They said for adults is this much, and for children is this much. She said they asked her, uh, ma'am, for how many? She said for me. She said okay for one adult. She said no, I'm a child. No, ma'am, you're not a child. I'm a child of God. <laughs> <laughs> so many of you, you think being a child of God is a pass. Yet being a child of God means I must be more informed than the world. Wow. Wow. 
Being a child of God means I must be more informed than the world. That is why I find it very funny when Christians say, when they see, uh, like some people, they will say, oh, prophet's watch is too, oh, this, this, this. Uh, you've seen foolish people like that. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the best watch, how are you going to prosper? Wow. Because everything is in classes. You know why people in poverty can never recognize what rich people say? They say they just wear a simple shirt, a sim simple pants and what. You don't know the brands because they are not advertised. Wow. wow. That's it's a different bracket. Mm -hmm. Wow. When you hear Angelo Galasso, you don't even know what that is. It sounds like it's a, it's a hamburger <laughs> <laughs> or a kind of pizza. But those people, have you ever seen a, have you ever seen a Lamborghini advertised? Mm -hmm. A Maybach advertised? Yeah. Have you ever seen a Rolls Royce, 2019 Rolls Royce? No. They don't even have ears attached to it. Because why? This thing is for a certain class. People in that class, they know it. Mm -hmm. So when somebody who is in poverty, they would try to overdress to look like money, but real money doesn't look like that. Mm -hmm. It looks simple. Thanks. But if you look at the tag, it's a completely different story because it is the, it is, it is the, the level mm -hmm that they are playing in. That's good. That's true. So if your knowledge, you're saying I will prosper, I will prosper, but you still want to shop 99 cent store. Mm -hmm. Yet you have already passed that class. You are, you are allowing the curse to stay on you. Wow. Notice, even believers don't stay. Do you remember when we used to, when we were young watching Disney movies? Mm -hmm. Snow White was cursed to sleep. Cursed to sleep because she was the most beautiful in the land. I don't know if it was the auntie or the queen, whoever she was. She cursed, it. She cursed her. Mm -hmm. But the curse was only going to be broken by somebody who come, a prince charming that will give her a kiss. She will wake up. Notice what you're not learning is that curses are broken because of applying a certain principle. Wow. Curses don't simply break because you say in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have to know how that mathematic works. An example is this. The Bible says, honor your father and mother and your days shall be long. Mm -hmm. So God declared a curse attached to disobedience. If you don't obey your father and mother, it will not be well with you and your days will not be long. So if your days are going bad because you argued with your father and mother, they don't have to be right. The Bible says honor them. Honor is not do what they are saying. Mm -hmm. If they are telling you go and be a prostitute, go, go be a killer, don't listen to that. But you still need to honor them because they birthed you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now you, you argue with them, you fight them, you insult them. Then things are not working out. You go to deliverance service and a foolish Man of God will say, it is your father's house. Mm. <laughs> no, go apologize. Everything will open. You don't apologize. It doesn't matter how much you pray, how much you fast. It will never change. Mm. Because curses are tied to principles. Principles break curses. Prayer destroys demonic forces. Mm. Prayer dismantles demonic forces. Principles break curses. Wow. I don't know if somebody is hearing me. Yes, yes, yes. We hear you, Papa. Yes. That is the difference between uh, Gael, God bless you. This is the difference between uh, 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 releasing healing, praying for healing, and rebuking an infirmity. Mm. <laughs> wow. Some people are sick, not because there is an infirmity. Their diet may have been poor. You need to declare healing. 
if there is an infirmity mm -hmm. that is causing, there's a spirit behind the sickness, then when you rebuke the spirit, the health comes back. That's why the Bible says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Some sickness is not a matter of laying hands, it's rebuking the infirmity. But if you wow. don't know what you're dealing with, you'll be going to prayer line, line fire, pop, <laughs> pa! <laughs> but nothing is changing. <laughs> I don't know if somebody is catching me. Am I helping somebody? Keep sharing this video, it's going to help somebody. Notice Jesus could not break the curse of sin by prayer. He could rebuke everything. He could destroy everything. But the only way to destroy the curse of sin of mankind, he needed to sacrifice. If he did not take the place of that thing, then the curse remains. There was no prayer that was going to take that away. That is why you find other religions like Muslims, they don't believe that, why couldn't God just forgive people? They don't understand that sin is a curse. Mm. That is why they are struggling with sin. Mm. So Jesus could not pray against sin. Yeah. He had to come and there was a principle that had to be fulfilled. Because God already told them, the day you eat of this, you shall surely die. So the only way you break the curse of sin, somebody has to die. Mm. Wow. Wow. There has to be a sacrifice. So God wants to save humanity and he is God almighty, all powerful, all knowing, has everything. But in order for him to destroy the curse of the man, of mankind, he had to give. Wow. Not just change the story because he can't. You don't fulfill the, 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 uh, um, the principle. You don't break the curse. Sin was a curse. Sin is not a spirit. Even the devil is not in control of sin. I'll say that again. Somebody may not hear it. The Bible says sin took, sin took opportunity through the law. And the, and the devil took opportunity after sin. Even the devil cannot control sin. He is not the creator of sin. The Bible says, and sin was found in you. We don't know where sin started. <laughs> I don't know if somebody is catching this. And sin was found in heaven, not on earth. Wow. <laughs> How did... <laughs> Aish. Uh... Too much, too much, too much, too much, too much. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh. Jesus. I feel like I'm talking to myself. That's why I'm yeah. saying misinformation. Weird, weird. The devil himself sin tricked him and destroyed him. Wow. But you're thinking the devil is responsible for sin. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's good. That's good. I'm just telling truth. Him himself is a victim of sin. That is why sin, death, hell, everybody will be thrown in the lake of fire. You see, what I'm using now here is supernatural knowledge. It's not study knowledge. But if I did not know how to bring it to you in order for you to understand it, then I am, my supernatural wisdom makes no sense. Yes. Uh, is sin, so, um, sorry, not sin. So poverty, is it just a curse or it's a combination of like, it's a, it can be lack of wisdom or it can be a curse? No, it's 100% a curse. Okay. So it's not a spirit, it's a curse. It's a curse. It's a curse. Let me tell you where it began. Genesis chapter 3. 
Let's go to Genesis. Notice this number one. If you go to Genesis chapter number two, okay, let's go to Genesis two. Let me show you something. I'm just trying to help my people. I wish more people, we are only uh, almost 200 people on Facebook. I wish Facebook would share more. Can I see YouTube? Where, where is YouTube? 236. Calvin, God bless you. Uh, my son Richard, the Bishop Jones, God bless you. And Latoya Jones, God bless you. All those who are giving, may God increase you and multiply you. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, you know, to be honest with you, children of God, I can't wait when God one day will allow me to say too much. I haven't yet said much. Wow. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let me show you something. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. I'll start from verse 9. Okay. Mm -hmm. And out of the ground mm -hmm. made the Lord God to grow every tree mm -hmm. that is pleasant to the sight mm -hmm. and good for food. Mm -hmm. The tree of life also mm -hmm. in the midst of the garden mm -hmm. and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And a river went out of Eden mm -hmm. to water the garden. Mm -hmm. And from thence it was parted and mm -hmm. became into four heads. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. The name of the first is Pesan. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah mm -hmm. where there is gold. Uh -uh. Right. Why is the Bible telling you about gold? Adam doesn't even know what gold is. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even care about gold. But the presence of God... When God gave Adam purpose and instruction and wisdom to manage, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, do this, immediately the first thing that is pointed up about, about his surrounding is there is no poverty where you are. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Verse 12. Mm. And the gold of that land is good. Why, is, why are they giving you all this information? <laughs> Keep reading. There is delium and the onyx stone. Ah, ah. Why all this notice? It was not, they, they started with gold. What is, the, what, what, let me ask you, what do we measure, current, what do we measure economy or, or, or the currency of a country by? The it's the gold standard. So whatever dollar or whatever money you have in your account mm -hmm. is measured by some gold in the bank. Mm -hmm. What do we call money again? Currency. So God is showing you currency. Currency means a flow. And in that flow there was gold. There was onyx. Wow. So if you don't understand currency, meaning this is a flowing thing. Some people didn't catch it. Uh, this is too I much. It, I, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm messing people up and they are not catching it. It's called currency. You measure every currency by gold. And the best gold. So the Bible is already telling you Adam was controlling the best currency on earth before money was even there. Ah. That's deep. This is too much. Sheesh. Why was the gold already good? Why was he where gold was? Because he was in his assignment. Wow. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Okay. Hmm. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Now, Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Remember, the responsibility of this currency thing was not given to Eve. Eve was supposed to be a helper to Adam. So when they missed, messed up in their assignment, 
Eve was given a different punishment, but the punishment of Adam was tied to economy. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And unto Adam he said, uh -huh. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, uh -huh. and hast eaten of the tree, uh -huh. of which I commanded thee, saying, yes. Thou shalt not eat uh -huh. of it. Uh -huh. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Ah, problem started. Before that, the ground could not be cursed. Meaning the process of making money became difficult from that moment. Mm. Wow. Wow. The first thing is the ground is cursed. Before that, the ground was not cursed. So meaning there was never going to be resistance in you getting your money. Even if you are, if you are lazy, you are fine. Wow. <laughs> wow. Even though God never, God hates laziness, by the way. God cannot stand laziness because it means you have no purpose. And if you have no purpose, you have no reason of being alive. Sheesh. You are useless. And God doesn't like useless things. So the ground was immediately cursed because you who are supposed to be controlling this economic system, you have messed up. It will no longer be easy. Keep reading. What does it say? <sighs> All right. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Uh -huh. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Notice, is making money easy? No. Huh? No. Ah, you people are quiet on me. Is it easy? No, no, no. no. God is saying in sorrow. <laughs> Meaning, it will not be easy to get money. It is there. But the process of it being easy, it will no longer be there. Meaning that the purpose of people was also hidden because what makes you productive is that you know what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. wow. So Adam is no longer working in the garden. How is he going to be wealthy? How is he going to have more than enough? He was picking from trees that God already planted. His job was to manage. Now he has to go and till the ground and eat from that ground. But now, because he has to start it, it will not be easy. It was easy because God gave him something to manage. Now he has to begin from the ground up. God is sending him to the ground to till it. God is saying in sorrow. Sorrow. Keep reading. Genesis 3. We started from verse 17, now on 18. Uh -huh. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Notice this. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth. Before then, thorns did not exist. But you have to understand, God is saying thorns, the ground will bring forth thorns. But notice, thorns are always attached to plants. So what thorns was he talking about? That the ground will bring forth. He was saying that it will not be easy. There will be a lot of bumps that will poke you. Sometimes you will step, it will hurt. Sometimes it will be like this. You have to be completely determined to eat from it. Wow. It will not be an easy process. Mm. Keep reading. Verse 19. Uh -huh. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. What does sweat represent? Hard work. God did not say that you just work. You work very hard. So if you are not breaking a sweat, some of you, you are sweating by stressing. <laughs> <laughs> Stress is what is making you sweat, but not because you are actually working. And you can be sweating by doing the wrong thing and you still not be productive. Wow. Keep reading. We're about to finish here. Mm -hmm. Till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Until the day you leave this world. Listen. 
I believe in miracle money. God has done it for me. But you cannot live on miracle money. Some Christians have made it a lifestyle. That's why you're still waiting and it doesn't come. Because you're not determined to work the ground. I receive it. I speak miracle. I receive it. But if God only does that to show you that he is capable. That is why the Bible says this. This is why the Bible says this. Whatsoever you shall lay your hands on, it shall prosper. It did not say God will put something in your hands to prosper. Mm. Wow. You have to go to find what you need to lay your hands on. If you don't find something to put your hands on, God has nothing to prosper. Mm. So God is still responding to your hard work, not to your prayer. Wow. Wow. I want to prosper. God says, yes, I'm ready to prosper. You go find something. So believers, number one, it's a curse. Number two, it's the lack of wisdom. Number three, laziness. Because you don't want to go and get it and God is not going to put it in your, on your lap. Laziness, ignorance, this makes that curse remain on you. There are a lot of people that work hard and they are not lazy but they are still poor. Let me tell you what to be out of poverty looks like. Because you can work hard and you are able to afford your rent or maybe your mortgage but let me tell you if you want to know that you are still poor. If what you have cannot bless others and you still have much left, you are still poor. Wow. You, are still, you are still in poverty. You are, you are peddling the water, but you are not out. Yes. Is there a correlation between uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken I think the verse says mm -hmm. it is God that makes you to will is yes. there a correlation between him making you to will and laziness yes. I'm, I'm trying to show you now where the curse settles in how the devil uses that to his advantage okay. notice everybody that is in poverty there is something wrong with the way they think When the curse of poverty is in a people, it corrupts the way they think. They will never see a way out of poverty. So when the Spirit of God comes and they are truly yield to the Spirit of God, the first thing that God does is he removes scales from their eyes. God won't start by telling you left or right. He will open your eyes to see where you are. Hey! Life could be better and I'm here. I need to find a way out. Then now you start adding tools that God has offered to raise you out of it. When a witch releases a, 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 a curse, it affects the mind. You will never succeed. That's why some of you, I don't receive those words, but they are still, they said this to me, but I don't receive those words. It's because that word already manipulated how you think. Mm -hmm. Some of you, if somebody says, you're broke, you say, huh? I'm not broke. God, God, God forbid. Uh -uh. <laughs> me, you say you're broke. I say, huh? where? I, even me, I will be looking for who you're talking about. <laughs> because not here. Amen. Amen. That is why the Bible says, may, they, may the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Mm -hmm. The enlightenment is to understand, to think. Positively, because negative thinking is a presence of a curse. It's a demonic manipulation. It is not a spirit, but it's a demonic manipulation. There's a spirit that has influenced you to have that mindset. So the devil knows, if you have met a few speed bumps, 
he will bring a mindset in your hand. Ah, just live, just, just be shallow. Mm-hmm. Just look like this, it's okay. On the weekend, just party yourself away and just forget your troubles and, and just go on. There are other people that are like you. Maybe one day it will change, but it will never. Notice it's mm-hmm. poison in your mind. The desire to be average is demonic. Wow. How can you be made in the image and likeness of God, but you just want to be average? Mm. Wow. You don't want to shave nicely. You don't want to make your hair nicely if you're a woman. You don't want to dress nicely. How can you go to where you don't want to look like? Working hard and laziness I've seen people that are not lazy, they work hard, nothing is opening. Now there are people who, they earn, but their money doesn't do anything for them. That's usually because they don't tithe, they don't protect what they have been given. Mm. That's a different thing. Because you may have the increase that is coming in, but you're not faithful in your tithing and your giving. What will happen? God rebukes the devourer because the devourer is looking for something to eat that is not protected. So when you give your tithe, you are protecting, you are are covering your investment spiritually. You cannot cover it by prayer. You can only cover it by giving. On earth, when you want good roads, maybe in other countries this doesn't work. I thank God for... This country that I live in that has been amazing to me, that I'm a citizen of, and, and, and some of you may be in other countries that experience good things in your country, but, but the reason the government takes tax is to make sure that you are protected, roads are there, the military, the things like that. So when you're giving tithe, it covers. You cannot say, I cover my finances in Jesus' name. It's not working. The only way you cover it is by giving. But that's not what we are talking about here. I'm talking about breaking poverty. Stop rebuking poverty. It's not a a spirit. It's a curse. A curse is only broken by following principles. When you realize that, okay, listen to what the Bible says. Your gift will make room for you. Another thing that keeps people in poverty is because you don't know your gift. You know your talents, you know your passions, but you don't know your gift. (laughs) Come on, keep going, keep going. Please expand. Please. William said, "Uh, my prophet, I'm watching you from Mauritius Island. God is good. Keep sharing, children of God. Keep sharing. The Bible does not say your talent. It says your gift. So many people are talent. You know, a talent is a skill that came to you naturally. Mm. A gift is tied to your purpose. An example is I am a talented music producer. Literally, I'm Grammy nominated and stuff. I am talented, but that is not my gift. My gift is the prophetic. (laughs) Amen. My passion was music too much. I didn't even know that I would be okay not doing as music, music as much. But when I came to discover my gift, my gift gave me fulfillment and purpose mm. beyond my talent. Mm. Amen. So your gift is what God put inside of you to be able to aid nations. Notice, Joseph 
was a very talented manager. No matter where he went, he was a talented manager. But his management skills did not get him to be prince of Egypt. Mm -hmm. His gift of dreams gave him the position. Wisdom did not give him the position. It was his gift that put him in trouble in his father's house that gave him the position. Mm. That's good. Too good. I wish somebody could hear me. I feel like I'm talking to myself. No, no, we hear you, we hear you. Notice Peter was a talented fisherman. But his gift was a mighty preacher. Mm-hmm. So Jesus, to make him understand his place, mm-hmm. told him, fish, you catch, mm-hmm. but you become fisher of men. Why is Peter highlighted as one of the greatest apostles? Because his position was to be the rock that the church was going to be built on. So he was never going to find fulfillment continuing to catch fish. It would always be a roller coaster. It is always your gift. Are you helping us? It is always your gift. You will not be passionate about your gift. Mostly people are not passionate about their gift. Very few people are passionate about their gift early. Your passion doesn't do anything for you unless it's your gift. So some people are always, you know, uh, 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 I have so many talents, 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 I have so many talents. Talents don't, mm -mm, your gift. Somebody called Loredana says uh, people need to keep to keep uh, the commandments. <laughs> you don't know the Bible, just leave it alone. <laughs> just leave it alone. <laughs> you just don't know the Bible. It's okay, leave it alone. This is the problem of uh, people who know everything. Just leave it alone. And that's with a lot of love. (laughs) That was a lot of love. Just leave it alone. If you knew the Bible, you would never type that. That is why the Bible says you are under grace. Nobody can keep the law. So did the did the Pharaoh keep the law to be rich? (laughs) (laughs) Just leave it alone, it's okay. Keep, no, no, it's fine. Study and show yourself approved. Your gift. Notice when God gave, gives you a gift and you don't stare up that gift because your gift is usually dormant because it's something like an example is this. I, 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 a while ago, I, uh, I was uh, listening to Steve Harvey, and he was talking about how everything changed about him. He's another guy who's passionate about saying that. He said, listen, my gift was to make people laugh. I tried everything, and then I realized, like, listen, this making people laugh is what I have. That's my gift. Not everybody is funny. Mm-hmm. You will always undermine your gift, but your gift is your ticket. Mm. Wow. That's a word. Your gift doesn't only make way, it makes room. It means it puts a place for you in society. Wow. Michael Jackson shook hands of presidents just because of moonwalking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Wow. Imagine. You need to settle down and really ask God. You can pray. 
you can pray. Notice, skill supports your gift. The talents are there to support your gift. But they are not there to be the gift. They are support for the gift. Joseph's his ability to be a talented manager, to be able to answer to authority to his father, made him a better leader in Egypt because he could respect authority. His brothers could never be leaders. Even though they were the tribes, they were all broken in pieces. They were really terrible. It's really by grace that God actually established them as tribes, especially the house of Judah. Ah. So your talents a support for your gift. I am a talented communicator. At least I believe that. Yes. And fruits have shown that so far. Yeah. I'm very good at communicating. I'm very good at making things that can be complex very simple. So when my spiritual gift kicks in, I'm able to interpret it easily. So my talent of able, being able to communicate people's skills mm -hmm. are aiding the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. that is the gift. Yes. So talents are many, but the gift is one. A hundred percent. Talent is not gift. Uh, you're teaching, I'm about to finish because I feel like it's late. It's almost midnight here. My son will God bless you. Someone on YouTube was asking, uh, how do I discover or how do I come to know my gift? Obviously praying, but number two, you have to observe yourself. You see life through your gift, not your talent. That's good. Your talent is what you like to do. Your gift is just how you see things. That's why you find in every industry we have average people and best people. The average is because maybe they have not maximized in their talents to support their gift. Like an example, a gifted hairdresser needs skill to bring the hairstyle that they are seeing in their head to come to pass. Mm. So if their skill is not able to support what they are seeing, they will be average. Another talented hairdresser, their skill might be so high that they are able to deliver the picture they are seeing in their mind. Is this making sense? Yeah. Yes, yes, so your yes. talent is always there to support your gift. It's not a replacement of it. Some of you, you have the gift of business, meaning you're always seeing opportunity. Some people try to do business because they are tired of not doing anything. But there are people who are gifted business people. Wherever there is a problem, like an example is right now, uh, the whole world is shaking and scared about coronavirus. Let me tell you, sanitizing companies are making a lot of money right now. In fact, right now, if you go to the store, finding toilet paper, and this is in America, like toilet paper sanitizers, it's a hassle. It's there, but they can change the prices now because the, a business person takes opportunity of what people need. Mm -hmm. They understand people's needs. That's what business is. Right. Business is not, I'm going to start selling clothes. Business is... What do people, what are people into wearing? Because it means that every season I have to be changing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a business person. They always know what people want to wear. So if you're still trying to have clothes from the 60s, saying this is the best fashion, <laughs> in 2020, no one is going to buy it unless they're doing a masquerade party where people have to dress. <laughs> Is this making sense? Yes, 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 yes. So the spiritual anointing 
and the power to make wealth. Notice the Bible does not say to make money, to make wealth. God gives you the ability to make wealth. What is wealth? Generational. Riches is, is temporary. Wealth is generation. When God, when you discover your gift and God anoints you, he anoints you now to enter into wealth. There is uh, Bishop Chikes is here and he's doing deep. God bless you. There is being having some money to support yourself. There's being rich and there's being wealthy. You should not desire to be rich even though it is the step before wealth. Mm -hmm. You must look to become wealthy. Mm -hmm. Where it's generational. Your children's 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 children are not struggling. Mm -hmm. yes. You have broken the curse. Amen. A curse is to leave somebody in a bad condition. Misfortune is not a curse. That's a different thing. And I'm going to pray for you that God will help you to really know, to have time to reflect on yourself, to give you the ability to know what God has put in you in order for you to be a blessing to the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Misfortune is fixed by prayer, not by a principle. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray for you. I don't know if you're ready for me to pray. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, in the beautiful name of Jesus, I pray for everybody that is watching. Lord, heaven is paved with the streets of gold. If we are living below that, then Lord, we are not living to the standard of our own home country. Father, you never desired poverty for anybody. We know poverty is a curse through your word. Father, I pray that your people, these words they have heard today, let it enter them. Let it open their eyes to know that you have prepared a place flowing with milk and honey for them. I pray that, Lord, you give them dreams, you give them visions, you give them you give them understanding, even send people that will help them uncover their gift. Lord Jesus, position them so that they can be useful in this world, so that they can make a difference. Amen. I thank you, Father, that you hear me and you always hear me. I thank you, Father, that I have spoken this by your spirit. Let your people prosper because this is your will. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. God bless everybody wherever you are in the world. May God multiply you and increase you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I love you and Jesus loves you more. Shalom, shalom.
walk. Do you not know? Most of you will leave this conference. Your thinking pattern will change and your utterances will change. Even when it's obviously not working, we will not say it. Because the devil wants to get you to say it so that you accept and agree with him. The Greek word is homologia. When you speak, you are speaking in agreement. The demon comes to whisper to your head, you won't succeed. This project won't work. It won't work. It must work. Because the world was created in six days. The fastest way to get to your desired destiny is by speaking. And number three, because of our time, he said, when you speak in Joshua 1 8, he said, observe to do. Don't just speak. When you speak, he said, observe to do. In Acts chapter 1, verse 1, he said, of all that Jesus both began to do and to teach. We don't only talk, it's a profession. We say and we do. If you begin to speak and do, your destiny and your life will literally keep being catapulted to greater realms of glory. When you say you are a national prophet, then begin to pray and study. That's what prophets do. When you say you are an evangelist, begin to go out to win souls. When you say you are an academician, begin to read books and pass exams. Don't just speak and sit down. When you say you are a business merchant, begin to invest. Even if it's 100 cities, invest it. Don't just speak. Speak and do. When you can do these three things, you will transit from glory to glory. Whether the devil likes it or not. sick now. We have five minutes. materialized in the name of Jesus every unwanted growth I command you now be gone growth in the breast growth in the chest growth in the tummy growth on the chin growth in the neck in the name of Jesus get out I command ears open eyes begin to see begin to see ears begin to hear begin to hear in the name of Jesus I command pains arthritis pains be gone. Ale, alleluia. Ale, alleluia. You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just said this prayer, please send us an email on discipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website oracomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.